Hello everyone, name's Jaleesa, JJ Movie T, so I should give everybody or another one. I'm going to give you my SmackDown vs. Raw. Which show is a better show? Which show is a show? Is it Raw or SmackDown Live? Now, again, I'm going to be a little bit biased because I'm a big SmackDown fan. I was a SmackDown fan long before Raw. SmackDown was a show that got me into wrestling. And so I wasn't there for the attitude there. I was born during that time. It's just I didn't get into wrestling until way later. So, SmackDown vs. Raw. I'm going to do a rant. We're going to go each division. We're going to do women's division, tag team division, uh, mid-card division with the WWE United States Champion Intercontinental Championships. We're going to go for the WWE uh, World Heavyweight Championship or WWE World Championship, whatever they're calling it now, or and uh, um, WWE Universal Championship. We're going to be doing each ranking of each division from high card to the lowest card, or not even to the lowest card, just to Divas Division, Tag Team Division, mid-card, and the main event. We're going to do each division, so let's start off this list, everybody. Let's start off with the women's division. The women's division on SmackDown. Who do we have? We have Becky Lynch, newcomers Carmel and Alexa Bliss from NXT. They are doing great work with them. We have the veteran Nathalia. We have Carmella, who has a great new ring entrance. Ava Marie, who, love her or hate her, she gets a uh, crowd reaction. Grant is mostly hate, but she still gets a reaction. She can't rinse for nothing, but still. We also got veteran Nikki Bella, who could be in the company for a good a couple years. But SmackDown has built this Divas division. This is a great Divas division. Every single one of these women probably has a chance of winning the dang SmackDown Women's Championship. On Raw, who do you have? You have Charlotte, Sasha Banks, Bailey. That's pretty much it. Those are the only three they focus on to win the women's championship. They will never give a title shot to Alexa, uh, not Alexa Bliss, um, Alicia Fox. They will never get a title to uh, Alicia Fox. They're not going to get a title. Uh, they're not going to get the title to uh, um, Dana Brooke, who can't wrestle, and Nia Jax, who've been drafted to Raw, and she's they done shit with her. They burn squash match, squash match. It's ridiculous how what Raw has done. They're, they have focused so much on Sasha Banks, Charlotte, and freaking Bailey that they don't build the future stars. Of the, well, they're building the future stars of the company. It's just they're not doing it in the right way. They need more uh, power. And the fact is they have an issue with Paige and she has a neck surgery. Raw is lacking in their development. Who can we honestly see to take the belt away from Charlotte? And who can we honestly see besides Bailey and Sasha to feud with Charlotte? Or if Bailey, it's just gonna go the same thing over. If Bailey wants to tell, then Charlotte's gonna fight uh, freaking uh, Bailey. If Bailey wins a tie, if Sasha wins a tie, she fights Bailey or Charlotte. They're not gonna go to Dana Brooke. Maybe they'll have Dana Brooke fight once in a while, but it ain't gonna happen for the title. And she ain't gonna win. We already know the outcome. We already know the prediction. Nia Jack might have a shot, but uh, it's a really long list. Alicia Fox ain't wrestling. Rosa Mendes, Summer Rae, they ain't wrestling. They, well, they ain't going to be title shot contenders at all. SmackDown, at least every single woman looks like they have a shot. Except for maybe not, not Dahlia. But still, every single one looks like they're having a great chance of winning the SmackDown Women's Championship. I mean, Alexa Bliss has done great work on the mic in the ring. Carmella has uh, tremendously improved. Nikki Bella, I, I really did not like her in the Bella Twins angle. I didn't like her as an overall character, but she's gotten a lot better in the ring. I like what she's doing. Natalia is a great in-ring performer. Great. Ava Marie, she draws a crowd. Either one of these characters could possibly, uh, possibly have a chance at the title. And the fact is that you're only focused on Charlotte, Sasha, and Becky for all three dang uh, of the freaking episodes of Raw is ridiculous. I mean, SmackDown has built a Divas division. You could look at their entire Raw uh, women's division roster in a six-man pack challenge at Dodie Backlash. Every single woman stood out. They all had great moments, and there wasn't a quick elimination by far at the beginning. It lasted a good 10, 12 minutes before there was an official one elimination in the six-woman pack challenge. That is freaking amazing. SmackDown has built it already in one pay-per-view, in less in one pay-per-view, less more than Raw, and they have done a lot more for their division by far. SmackDown is killing it with their Divas division. Okay, let's start. Now, after the women's division, let's see the tag team division. Raw tag team division. You got the New Day. You got the New Day. You got the New Day. New Day's gimmick is getting old and stale. They should have lost the title to the, uh, to the Bullet Club. Um, what are they doing? The Bullet Club has been officially been buried. They're, they're now jobbers. The Dudley Boys have freaking retired. Enzo and Cass is locked to the Shining Stars. 
twice, and they have lost to Chris Jericho and Kevin Owens, which ain't the official tag team for the tag team titles. Um, Primo and Epico, the Shining Stars, I don't mind them, but the fact is that they had built them way too late, and they should have won matches early on. Maybe won a match against a New Day. Do something spectacular with this character. Instead of burying them for so freaking long, you should have built up these characters a lot more, and these teams a lot more. What they have done for the tag team division has been crap. They have literally destroyed the tag team division on Raw. I mean, the only person that could probably take the New Day's title is still, I believe, the Bullet Club, but they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. Oh, wait. We got Cesaro and Sheamus after the best uh, pack of, uh, I'm not even sure what it was called, the best pa pack of seven matches, whoever wins. It's Cesaro versus Sheamus, and they're, since they end up in a tie, go freaking figure, they're going to be a tag team. So Cesaro won't get a title shot for a U.S. title or for a WWE world title. Neither will Sheamus. You know, freaking Roman Reigns gets like four different dang title opportunities and main event after main event after main event. But these two as superstars who work their ass off ain't going to get that. A t uh, actual good title shot besides tag team. We don't need to see them in tag team division. I mean... Tyson Kidd and Cesaro were a tag team, and if Sheamus failed in that crappy League of Nations shit, why the heck are they developing these characters like this? Why the hell are they doing this? Um, Cesaro should have just stayed on freaking SmackDown if that was... It is Cesaro. Cesaro should have just been drafted to SmackDown. Sorry, apologies. He, he, it's not the fact that he stayed there. He was drafted to Raw, and I'm, that's just piss poor. He should have been on SmackDown, and then if he was in the SmackDown scene, he probably... At least would have been fighting for the mid card position, or he would have been gaining up probably in a feud with Bray Wyatt, and he probably would have been Bray Wyatt's opponent at Backlash instead of fucking Kane. But whatever, you can't really change the past. But again, the tag team division on Raw is depleted because they always let the New Day win. They're not building up them. The New Day was already a tag team champions for a long time. They should have lost the titles at Clash of Champions. To the Bullet Club to re to help the Bullet Club get over with the fans, but right now they're just getting buried, and it's getting freaking ridiculous. Now we look at SmackDown's uh, attack teams. The Usos have been become a perfect teal team. I mean, they're attacking the ladies. They're aggressive. Um, they have built up the tag team division on SmackDown. The hype bros. They're getting hype. Hype, hype, yes, pun intended. Um, freaking Zack Ryder and Joe Joe. Um, they're actually a good tag team. They're actually entertaining in the ring, and we li like them. Who are the tag team champions? Heath Slater and Rhino. Heath Slater. They, SmackDown has built Heath Slater from nothing on Raw to something great on SmackDown. He has become the the man. He's over. He's over with the fans right now. He has a great partnership with Rhino. It has a little comedic thing, and it's a, definitely an odd couple thing. And they're fantastic uh, when they work together. Maybe not in ring uh, chemistry wise, but they are great. Uh, uh, they play off each other's characters very, very well. So Heath Slater and Rhino, they're working it. They're killing it for them. And let's not forget American Alpha. American Alpha is a great tag team. How could you not like American Alpha? They are doing great work with the Usos versus American Alpha right now. Jason Jordan has like a, a leg injury and Chad Gable. I mean, all of these characters are doing good. Granted, oh, and the Ascension won a tag team match. The Ascension won a tag team match. What else can I possibly say? I mean, the Ascension won a tag team match with the Usos. Unbelievable. Won't ever happen on Raw. That's their first win probably the entire year. I say the only ones they haven't really developed good uh, is Tyler Breeze and Fandango, even though they had pretty things, solid matches that were pretty close in the SmackDown uh, tag teams uh, tag teams uh, tournament. They had a pretty dang good match with American Alpha, and I enjoyed them. I also like the Vault Villains. I think the Vault Villains should change face, but yes, out of all the tag teams they have on SmackDown, probably only one is like a weak link, but they're still adding on to their characters and building them up. They're at least trying to help the, the, the people that they have buried. All the people that Raw has drafted or WWE has drafted from NXT to the, the company to the NXT to the main shows, they have done shit with them. They have buried the Vaude villains. They have buried the Incension. Tyler Breeze was something amazing in NXT, and they screwed him over, and now he's in a tag team with Fandango. Are you kidding me? I mean, SmackDown is building up this tag team, and it's freaking fantastic. I love it. I love what they're doing with the tag team on SmackDown. 
So yeah, SmackDown is whooping the uh, Divas division. They're whooping the tag team division. Let's see what else uh, can they do. Now let's look at the mid cards for both Raw and SmackDown. Okay, let's look at Raw. They have the WWE United States Champion Roman Reigns. Do I need to go any further? Okay, Roman Reigns beat Rusev at Clash of Champions for the WWE United States Championship. They have been feuding for a while, and was it the right choice? Yes, because Roman Reigns needs to stay away from the main event scene against Kevin Owens and the WWE Championship. He needs to build. They need to build Roman Reigns' character up again, and they need to keep him far away from Kevin Owens and again the WWE Universal Championship. Now. Rusev, who do they have to to really battle Roman Reigns? Rusev is still going to feud for Roman Reigns one more dang time. He's probably going to lose again. But what happens after Rusev? Sami Zayn? Oh no, he's feuding with Chris Jericho right now. He still has to fight Chris Jericho. Who's going to be for the main event scene? Who's going to be for the mid card scene? I mean, Cesaro and Sheamus? No, they're not. What about the cruise rates? Oh no, cruise rates has their own division. Who have they built up for mid card status in WWE Raw? Who? Unless the rumors report that TNA TNA is being bought by WWE, and WWE takes the TNA stars and put them on Raw, that's the only way I, they can replenish their mid card and main event scenes for freaking uh, WWE Raw right now. I mean, they're not building none of the future stars, or they don't have a great mid card position. They don't have no one on the mid card. They put the Charlotte Samus. As a tag team, Sam Zayn's feuding with Chris Jericho. Kevin Owens has Seth Rollins. Finn Balor is injured, or Finn Balor, however you want to call him. Who do they have for the main event scene? Triple H is going to come back to fight against uh, uh, freaking Seth Rollins. Who does Kevin Owens face against next? I'm, I'm trying to think about who they're building up to be the future stars against these. A competitors against the two champions, the United States Champion and Universal Champion, who's going to fight Roman Reigns or Kevin Owens? Will Roman Reigns fight Kevin Owens again for to combine the titles? Not combine the titles, but to champion versus champion, United States Champion versus Kevin Owens? That's the only way I could possibly see it. I don't see no other ways. And don't forget, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens were not drafted from different brands, so if anything, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens will fight again for the million freaking times. Why the hell are they doing this? Why have they not built a WWE product and, and WWE Raw and mid card? Why have they not developed a mid card really? Why sticks to Shaw and Sheamus again? I know I'm saying this for the third freaking time, but why are they developing these characters? Why have they developed these characters outside of a position that could benefit them singly, not together? We don't need another attack team for that. You need to focus on attacking that Enzo and Cass. You need to fix up. Big Cass and Enzo in the Bullet Club first. Put Cesaro and Sheamus into the mid card and into the main event. Put Cesaro against freaking Kevin Owens and put Sheamus versus Roman Reigns. You got a heel right there versus a face, a heel versus a face right there. No one's more over than the crowd right now than Cesaro. Well, Cesaro still is over with the crowd. It's just a WWE keeps sparing them or WWE Raw keeps sparing them. Who's ever in charge of Raw has completely depleted nearly every single. Thing, superstar. The only thing they have going for them is the cruiserweight division, and I can't really compare a cruiserweight division against Raw for SmackDown because the cruiserweight division is, exists on Raw, and they just started it off. So this is something that Raw is going to build to. SmackDown doesn't have cruiserweight division, but they don't need one because they're doing everything good for their mid card. Let's now turn to SmackDown, or what I like to call the Great Show, the A Show, SmackDown Show. Let's see what's happening on SmackDown. Oh, okay. The mid card. It's going to be The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler at No Mercy. Championship versus Career. When was the last time you ever heard of it, any superstar to rager their career on a mid card title? On a secondary title. Not the WWE title. Not the freaking Universal title. When was the last time you heard of a, champ, of a wrestler who put his career on the line over an Intercontinental title or United States title. Hasn't happened in never. I don't believe never. I don't believe I ever heard of one. The Miz has doing great work on his mic. What can also I can say about the mid card, they have 
Baron Corbin, Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews has looked strong. You know, sometimes he's kind of looked buried because uh, he keeps losing to Baron Corbin. But these superstars are there to, in order to go to the mid card session. You have people to replace Dolph Ziggler and The Miz over their feud. And more than likely, Dolph Ziggler will win at No Mercy, and then it will be none other than Baron Corbin versus Apollo Crews. Or Baron Corbin uh, versus Dolph Ziggler for an Incontinental title, but Dolph Ziggler's probably going to win. Then they're going to have Apollo Crews. I mean, there's so much stuff they could do, and if they want, they could put The Miz to the main event. You could turn AJ Styles' face. You could have The Miz versus AJ Styles, so which one has the bigger ego. Or you could have a heel versus heel, even though AJ's more over with the fans than anybody else. AJ, people love him, and they hate him. Even though he's a heel, they love him as a heel. And they cheer for him every single time out. Every single pay-per-view, they're voting for AJ Styles. AJ Styles. Not John Cena, not Dean Ambrose. What do they have also for the main event? They have John Cena, Dean Ambrose. They also have Randy Orton. Who goes on and off of his injury? Also, Bray Wyatt. If Bray Wyatt's winning No Mercy, he could freaking f f challenge AJ Styles. Change AJ Styles' face. Put him a face. Turn Dean Ambrose heel. Go Bray Wyatt versus freaking um AJ Styles. This will be a great freaking uh, uh thing to do. They have at least superstars. Unlike Raw, they have superstars they know who could be in the main event or mid cards. And going back to the tag team division, going back to the tag team division on SmackDown, they have Eric Rowan. If Luke Harper comes back from injury and they go, they draft him to freaking SmackDown, what do you think is going to happen? They're going to make him and uh, Eric Rowan a tag team, uh, the Wyatt family, versus the, the, for the tag team titles. Why not? If they put Luke Harper on Raw, they're going to do the same shit they, they've been doing with Braun Strowman. They've been doing nothing with him. They've been squash matching that dude. Half a Raw squash matches. Um, Braun Strowman, Bo Dallas, people they they have been buried. Bo Dallas who has been buried since the beginning of since he came here to WWE and since the main event. Even though he was an NXT champion, they have put him on a lower case than anybody else right now. He's in a squash match again. Why? Braun Strowman, they're trying to build him up. Maybe Braun Strowman will fight Roman Reigns for the mid card. I don't know. But they have literally developed very little characters on Raw for the main event and the mid-card position. While on SmackDown, they have built Dean Ambrose. I mean, they have Dean Ambrose, Randy Orton, uh, Bray Wyatt. Um, they could put Baron Corbin in, he's probably in a, in a World Health Great Championship match. John Cena is going to take time off. Dean Ambrose is going to take time off. But certain superstars are going to go over. Certain superstars are going to go under. That's, that's always going to be the way. There's a winner and there's a loser. And right now, the winner is clearly SmackDown. SmackDown has beaten Raw in every single category, in my opinion. They beat them in the Divas division. They have beat them in the Tag Team division. They have beat them already in the main event and mid-card positions by far. They have made every single title on their shows count. While on Raw, you get the same old stuff. Roman Reigns has a championship. Mm. Kevin Owens is a champion. Not by choice. Ben Baller had to freaking uh, vacate the top because he got injured. Guarantee you, Kevin Owens was not their choice to win the championship anytime soon. It's it, it, Kevin Owens would have been champion more than likely on Raw, but it wouldn't have come down during this time. It would not have happened. They probably would have continued to Finn Balor versus Seth Rollins, and then they would kill, com completely build them up. But right now, they have completely buried a lot of superstars on Raw, and SmackDown has risen this. And I guarantee you, when it is the next WWE draft, they're going to take all the great superstars they have on SmackDown. Alexa Bliss, um, the uh, American Alpha. They're going to take Bray Wyatt. They're going to take Randy Orton or John Cena. They're going to take any one of the superstars that they have progressed on SmackDown and put them on Raw. And Raw, every single superstar they have freaking buried on Raw is going to go to SmackDown for the draft. Guaranteed, because this is the history of Raw. They never have built the future stars of the company. SmackDown has always built the future stars of the company. They built John Cena. They had Mr. Kennedy on the show. Bobby Lashley. Then we had the late great Eddie Guerrero. I mean, Brock Lesnar started off on SmackDown. What has Raw truly built? Truly, what have they built for their dang company? I mean, Matt Hardy um, freaking is doing great on TNA. Well, who have they built? I'm trying to think right now. Who has they built on Raw? Truly, um, they could say Batista. They they built Batista during Evolution, and with Randy Orton, yeah, you could say that. But then Batista went to SmackDown, 
for draft of John Cena. They made John Cena more great than he already was because SmackDown already gave him the head start. And so Batista, he became awesome a, a face on SmackDown going against The Undertaker. There are so many moments or divisions that SmackDown has done over the past over Raw, and Raw has completely buried every single superstar they have done. Look at Daniel Bryan, for example. Let's look at Daniel Bryan. His career on Raw, he was in, like, Who's Gonna Kiss Him first with the Bella Twins and Gail Kim. Remember that stupid freaking angle about uh, losing virginity of Daniel Bryan? What kind of shit was that? When he went to SmackDown, he was uh, in a relationship. He won the money in the bank. Then he had a little relationship with AJ Lee, which worked perfectly. They played great off each other. They had great chemistry, those two. And they started off the crazy angle with AJ Lee, the yes and no Daniel Bryan. I mean, he was a world champion. We had a great Sheamus, a great Mark Henry, Hall of Pain. What did Raw freaking do? SmackDown, we had Christian and Randy Orton during the, that great feud that they had when during the draft. I mean, what has Raw truly built? You could say the Shield, but the Shield has come during the whole, uh, when the brand was all together, when Raw and SmackDown were both combining their talent. They built the Shield up. Yeah, well, who else have they built in the last couple of years? Uh, Cesaro and Ty it's a, a Tyson Kidd got wrecked. They built tag team after tag team after tag team, which Cesaro, Cesaro has proven every single dang point. We got they got rid of Damian Sandow, who was a great freaking wrestler, a great gimmick. He could make everything work. Ms. Dow. Um Drew Galloway or Drew McIntyre, he was the chosen one. What happened to him? He formed Dream Man Band. Oh, let's uh Ginger Mahal's on Raw. Could he fight for the championship? Nope. Not gonna have to see him in the mid card, not gonna see him anywhere. To me, he should just go to the cruiserweight uh division. Uh, Jinder Mahal, I don't even know why they signed him back up, why they picked him of all people to come back. Um, SmackDown, uh, I mean, freak, what the heck has, I don't understand how people could honestly say that Raw is better than SmackDown. It's so obvious which one is the better brand. Throughout history, which one was the better brand? Which one has built future stars of the company? And in my personal opinion, SmackDown will always be the A show. SmackDown is the number one show of the WWE right now, not including NXT. NXT, I have looked up their stars. They're just great on NXT. Let's just clarify that. NXT is a great uh, thing to show, and for the superstars they have built to go to the main roster, SmackDown at least is trying to reinvent themselves. They're trying to rebuild these characters that Raw or WWE has put to, he to garbage. Raw, Bailey has was already in the main event scene, already lost at the WWE Championship match. I think she was in a squash match. Yes, there's like four different squash matches: one for Nia Jax, one for Braun Strowman, one from Bo, one for Bro Dallas, and one for uh freaking Bailey. It's getting absolutely ridiculous how many squash matches there are on Raw, and how little development they built these superstars. It's just absolutely freaking ridiculous. The only way that could help save Raw right now is if the rumors are true that Paul Heyman is going to start writing for Raw and for the creative team. And if that happens, then Raw will be golden for a while. Then again, Paul Heyman is going to have to deal with the shit that they have built up on Raw and try to make it into gold. That's what he's going to have to do. But if anyone could do it, it's Paul Heyman. You know, the guy who made SmackDown great with the whole SmackDown 6. And for, Oh, wait, you can't talk about this guy. I forget about him. But let's just say this. Paul Heyman is an instant masterpiece. He is a master at his craft, and that is great wrestling storytelling. And he could do that for Raw, and he could be the savior of Raw. But again, SmackDown, in my personal opinion, is better than Raw by far. It's never going to change. So yes, SmackDown will always be better than Raw. All right, everyone. My name's Jalise. You can leave a comment down below. Let me know. Respect my opinion. I'll respect yours. And please leave logical comments. I mean, if you aren't going to just uh, argue with me just for the sake of arguing about things, the words like you're stupid, you're an idiot, or so many dang, other dang offensive comments you want to put down, go right freaking ahead. Go right freaking ahead. Really couldn't give two flying shits, but uh, please, you're going to you're gonna help me have less of a headache if you're going to do that shit. But again, SmackDown is better than Raw. There is no other explanation of what I need to explain more. I mean, 
SmackDown is better than Raw. Always has been. Always will be. Maybe not the theme songs, but still. SmackDown is better than Raw. Alright, everyone in Jalisa. I'm offering it to everybody. Bye-bye.